hello and welcome to my channel so today we are going to be drawing these butterflies sitting on lavender that you can see up in the top left of my screen <clears throat> and I'm going to start by drawing just a straight line I could actually just go straight in with the paintbrush I don't even need to draw these lavender because you just use the very tip of your brush so I'm just going to literally draw in my straight line and I won't draw each little leaf. You don't need to draw each little petal, each little leaf. I'm just going to draw <clears throat> the butterflies in. And I'll add the rest. I'll just give myself a guideline of these other little lavender flowers. That's a bit shorter. And there's a few in the background, but I won't worry about those. I'm going to focus on this one in the centre. And I'm going to draw this beautiful butterfly here in... The middle or just below the middle and I'm gonna just do one wing actually I should draw his little body first actually no, I'm gonna do the wing so I'm just following the shape it's all it's sort of a almost a heart shape and it meets about there I can adjust and readjust as I need to so I'll draw the other wing, so I'll just measure the, the distance. So I've got, I'll draw the other side of the little body there, and then I mark, I do a rough measurement, and I put a pencil mark in, so I know that my wings are about the same length, which is what I want. And then I'll draw this little wing. Coming down, they've got almost a heart shape. Sort of an off, sort of off centre heart shape wings like that I can actually draw them in a bit more like I said I can adjust and readjust like that and take that one back in a bit more like that okay and I'm just going to rough in his little body so they've got a little quite a thick front part of their body their little thorax and the front bit and then these little guys have got quite long tails, so their tails are about the same length as the front part of their body. And you can see it goes sort of three quarters of the way down the wings. So I'll pop that little body in there. So I'm going to just erase these little pencil lines that I've done there. Just erase them, soften them a little bit. Like that. Okay, and then draw his little body in. And then we've got a nut, and he's got little antennas, which I can paint on at the end, like that. We will draw the patterns, because I might even make his wings a little bit longer, you know. I might make them a little bit longer. You can adjust, you can change things. So he's got that one. He's got like three little triangle things on, and three little re rectangles on top. Like that. We'll get the butterfly detail in. The flowers are the easy part. The flowers are the easy part. So, draw his top wing like that. And he's got, don't have to be exactly the same, but he's got three little stripes. I'll erase a little bit there because I've got a bit too much pencil stuff going on. Take that off there, like that. So, he's got three little rectangles up here and a couple little white dots and the white that I leave will be the, the white that I do will be the white of the paper that's the plan anyway do a dot there I've rubbed out the corner of that rectangle and he's got lots and lots of little dots which I'm just gonna take around the edge of this wing and then it's dark from there so and he's got like a rim around the edge of his wing so I'll pop that little rim on so I know to leave that like that okay and then this little this little wing overlaps that one and he's just got a teardrop shape and then that little bit there how many has he got one two three four and a bit four and a bit three so we're only going to fit four in, but that's okay. Doesn't matter. Okay, now this one, I might take. So I've got the wing. I've got to take that wing about out a little bit. Pop 
but I'll go around the outside edge like that and he's got one that way so symmetry, he's got the symmetry of the other side and then he's got a long one which I'll take down about there and a shorter one doesn't matter it's a little bit bigger and a shorter one like that same on the other side he's got three little short rectangles then a little circle above them and another couple of little circles above them like that might draw a little square bit in there just to make that look right but you see what I've done here I've actually made that one too long so I'm going to shorten that and I'm going to I've got to just break this wing into halves just like that like that and then do lots of little circles coming around here Oops. and I can erase little bits as I go and you can see I'm adjusting and readjusting and this is my normal drawing process I change things backwards and forwards as I go he's got oh what have I done there I've got to change the angle on that it's really hard like, because your eyes see things differently I've got to change the angle I've got to draw that down like that so I've got to change the angle on these because I see things differently from one side to another it's, it's interesting how your mind works how your mind can play tricks on you when it comes to drawing things so just adjust those back again like that then come around and draw those little circles it was only I only noticed that when I went to do this other wing and I'm like hang on a minute that looks wrong so all right so I'm happy with that now oh, excuse me I'm gonna sneeze I'll turn my microphone off for a second <coughs> oh excuse me oh I didn't turn it off well, that was smart wasn't it <laughs> anyway doesn't matter um, so I'm gonna draw now he has a longer one here and two shorter ones that come down there like that there we go that's looking a bit better that's looking better and I can draw little circles going all the way around the outside okay so we've got our first little butterfly pretty much drawn in now I'm going to do this little one he's side on and you can only see half of his little body and his little antenna so I'll just draw his little body shape in you can't see his taily bit and then his wings are about a quarter of the way up his back and again it's sort of like an off heart shape just a little bit off a heart shape he's got quite beautiful long wings actually they come down more to the back of his little body like that okay we've got little spotty bodies might make that a bit taller and then he's got the line around the edge like that and his wings join or well, he's got overlapping wings and then this one the other heart, half of the odd heart shape comes around there like that and he's got one sort of semi rectangle goes there then he's got three or four little ones one two can make them a bit longer one two three little ones like that then he's got a couple of larger ones it shows you how to doing things like this 
They can be done very simply, or you can make them as hard or as easy as you like. I like detail, so I have fun trying to draw detail. But you can always do it very simply, just like with shapes. You don't have to do all this detail that I'm doing. You don't have, by any means, you can do whatever you like. I personally just find detail lots of fun. I draw his little, you know, he's got that one triangle shape, then he's got sort of a rectangle shape. And then they go up into the corner. He's got one that comes up here, that sort of meets the others. Then long ones that come down here, the full length almost of his wing. And then another one there like that. I'm only going to do the two, I think. I'm only going to, um, yeah, I might do the third one in the background. He's just more of a, you can only just see him as more of a suggestion of a butterfly. I'm just going to make that one a bit longer. Like that. And then I'm going to adjust. I'm going to rub out that little line there. These needle erasers are great because you can shape them to fit. Um, the, uh, the 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 picture. So I'm I am going to draw this little one in in the background, but I'm going to do him so he's just a, he's going to be a blurry. He's not going to have the detail of the first two. He's just going to be flying off into the distance, like that. Got to make him a bit longer, a bit longer, like that. And he's just a shape. He's just a shape. Oops. And I'll erase the middle of that. You can see I'm quite scribbly. When I draw, I'm quite scribbly. <laughs> okay, come down and around here. And then back around here. Try and keep the symmetry on the other side. Like that. Give him his little body. Like that. And then he's got... You can only see the orangey, sort of orangey tones on him. Right, so we are going to start with our lavender. So I'm going to spray my watercolours and I'm going to go straight in with a nice light purpley colour and then I'll build up to the darkers as I go. So I'm going to wet my brush, get a bit of cloth and we are just going to literally use the tip of the brush, tip of the brush, get this lovely little lavendery colour lilac -y colour for the very first layer and I'm literally I'm not even going to draw it in I'm just going to draw use the side of my brush to suggest I actually need a bigger brush than that I'm going to go a size 6 brush and I'm going to just use the side of it to plop in the lavender so you just literally just rest the side of your brush on the paper like that and you work your way down might do one side at a time it's a bit hard with the right hand side so yeah you don't have to draw every single petals let the let the brush do the work for you like that and then I'll just continue that right down the page like that all the way down I might do one side at a time just cause and you can have them overlapping a little bit just keep them interesting I'm gonna do a few layers so this is just the first layer and I might do a little green stem in the middle as well so and I'll do this little one off to the side here grab a bit more of that lilac -y color and just blob it down literally the side of my brush and these are sort of I don't know circle what do they call them round brushes I like me round brushes you can get lots of effects with them so and I'll do this one as well on this side just again just blobbing it onto the paper just following the pencil line that I drew on and I'll go in with a slightly darker lavendery colour in a second. Like that. Alright. 
They were they're more of a blue. They were more of a bluey purple. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna put a bit of blue. I'm gonna mix up a lavendery colour. I'm gonna go. What colour is that? That's a, quite a deep purple. But I'm gonna add a bit of blue to it. A bit of cobalt. Just to blue it off a little bit. And then I'm gonna go back in while that's still wet and drop that into the bottoms of those little petals. Add a bit of water here and there. There we go, just to keep it flowing. And I'm going to drop that bluish tone just into the bottom of the lavenders while it's still wet. And that'll flow back up into the wet paint and mix itself together. Just like that. And it's just blob it into the ends like that. There we go. So it's just an effect. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just to give you the idea. Again, using the edgier brush, just blip blob, 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 and let it flow into the wet watercolour underneath. Like that. And that gives you the effect. Hello, David. How are you, doll? Welcome. So, yeah, I'm just dropping blue and purple mix into the center like that and it's that simple it doesn't have to be exactly like the photograph it's a bit of fun I'm gonna add a little bit of green also because I've got well, it's a bit too I'm gonna grab a bit of an olivey green just to the middle as well because they do have little stems and I can let that flow I don't mind if that flows into the purples as well does not matter at all you see I've got quite a lot on the brush it just creates a little bit of interest so keep coming down grab a little bit more oh, excuse my dog down there being a barky and I'm just going to again dropping just dropping the green into the middle and let it flow don't have to fuss too much and that is pretty much it and you can add little blobs on top just to create that little sort of flowery bit look and there we go so that is the lavender that's all I'm going to do for that I'm not going to fuss anymore I'm going to leave that as it is and we're going to get on to the butterflies so the white of the paper is going to be the white of the butterflies so but I'm going to go straight in with my transparent sienna one of my favorite favorite colors you can't see it over here transparent sienna bring it a bit closer for you because that's a lovely golden brownie color I'm going to put that in the center of all of these little patterns and I'm just going to top the very watery you can see it's very watery I've got it very diluted so for the first layer so take it down here fill in all of these little blibs these little sort of rectangles and funny little shapes whoops I put I see what I've done here I've actually put color in one of the dots that I don't want color in so I'm just going to very carefully clean my brush get the excess moisture out of it and go back over and clean that off with my damp brush and very carefully just dry it with a towel and I've got it off there so I can leave those as the white of the paper because I forgot that the circles are supposed to be white <laughs> if you accidentally do that it doesn't matter you can actually just go over it with a bit of white pen a bit of white acrylic a bit of gouache anything like that that's absolutely fine um, yeah so we're going to continue on so I've got this little diamondy shape there Excuse my little dog in the background. My little dog helps me with my art streams and he's bouncing around under my table. I'm going to change the shape of that little rectangle a little bit. I've made it into a boot shape. Come down here. There we go. And you can see they're very dark between. So they've got quite dark little... I'm going to use a purple for that though. For the dark bit in the middle of the, the, pedal, the petals, the wings. I'm going to use like a dark purpley colour. I think it's more in it's sort of theme with the picture. Don't paint my dots. Just 
drop a bit of water, bit of bit of watercolour into the the rectangles like that. Come down here, and I can go over that again with another layer. You can see it's quite it's beading up on there. Um, which when I say beading up, I mean it's um, the water sitting in little puddles. And I can actually pick that up on my brush and use it on the other dots and other rectangles. So I'm not wasting any paint whatsoever. There we go. Like that. I think I might have to make this one a bit stronger. So again, I can go back into here, pick up the paint off my other one that's got excess excess watercolour on it. Just pick it up and then use that off my brush which has still got moisture in it to just get rid of that excess water like that. And we continue around. Again I'm just picking up that little bit of the water from the puddles on the other other wings and this is Fabriano paper hot press so it's a smooth paper I, I, I do I do use cold press which is which is grain paper but only a very light grained one I don't go the heavy grain but I prefer smooth watercolor paper because I do a lot of wildlife art and I like to have that um, smoothness when I work right so that's pretty much the brown bits, the goldy bits. I will add a little bit more reddish tone to a little bit of a reddy brown. I've got, I'll probably even use um, a bit of Caput Mortem. That's a beautiful reddy brown, rusty brown. And I'll add that in on top. Now this other butterfly in the background, you can barely see him. He's just, you can't see the patterns on him. So I'm just going to use, do him like a little, little solid coloured Butterfly, I'll just do, I can do the darker tones over the top. As long as you've got the lighter colours on the bottom, you're fine. I might even change the shape of that just a little bit. I can still change the shape of things as I'm going. I just want, think I, he needed to be a bit more up, up like that. Okay. And I can draw the outside lines on him when he dries. Also, Rupert the Bear and his friends talking taking purple flower showers. <laughs> it is lavender. Yeah. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, you make me smile, David. <laughs> that's lovely. Okay, so I've just literally just done the brown on the outside of that little one. And I'm going to let him dry and I'm going to go back onto these ones. And I'm going to use a bit of Indian red because it's a beautiful reddy brown. And I can pop it. Actually, I'll clean off my top palette. Where I've got my lavender colour, give that a wipe, and I'll get my Indian red, one of my favourite colours. One of my and I see how how that's a dark, rusty, sort of a, a brown, and I'm going to drop that in. Oops, maybe not that much. Damp that off a little bit. Don't want it quite that heavy, and just add that in to some of these little uh, rectangles. And I can go over this a few times with different colours because I'm work I'm still working really lightly, like I'm not using a lot of pigment. And he's I could probably even go a little bit more of a red. Go back into this one while he's still damp. I could probably even go a bit more of a red, but I'm undecided. I don't like this one up the top. I'm not feeling this one yet, but you know what? Famous last words, you'll work out okay, I'm sure. Um change his shape a little bit with my brush like that and he's just a suggestion so he's not full detail I'm just gonna round him off up the top there like that and then I'll add his final details at the end 
So, now I am going to go with a deep, deep purple. I'm going to use quinacridone. Clean my palette. Actually, no, I can pop it into there. Quinacridone. And I'm going to add indigo blue. Add indigo blue. And I might even add a little bit of brown just to make it a grey. A little bit of burnt umber to grey that off. And then I'm going to carefully go around the outside of his little wings. So you can see that's a really deep dark mauve colour. I'm going to leave little spots on his wings. I keep wanting to call them petals. <laughs> leave little spots. And the, the white of the paper is the white on the butterfly. So I'm being very careful to cut around the outside and leaving the white of the paper like that as the little dots. Come around the edge there using the side of my brush like that. Whoops. Okay, and I can go between these markings that I've made already and cut around them to fill in the marks on his wings. And he's starting to come together like that. Keep it nice and simple, doesn't have to be too fussy. And I'm working my way around all of these. I see it's very diluted. So that's indigo, bit of quinacridone purple, and a little bit of burnt umber to help me um, get that darker mauve colour. I don't, didn't want to do a black around the edge, it's too stark, too solid and flat. So I like to make my own greys using any kind of blue and burnt umber will make different shades of grey. So I'm going to go through all of these between them. Doesn't matter if I leave little gaps, to me it keeps it interesting. And then I come down this back part. Oops, there we go. And that's come together. So, and I've made enough of it. I've got quite a bit, bit of it, but I'll mix up a little bit more. So it's indigo, quinacridone purple, and a bit of bread, and a bit of burn umber. Like that, to make that grey, that purpley grey. Again, follow around the outside. I keep dipping my brush back into the water to get more moisture on it. And leaving the white of the paper as the white. And it's very diluted. And it's a fun one. Like this is a, a nice little sketch. You can give it away as a gift, as a birthday card. You could, you know, you could do a happy birthday letter on the back of it. These sort of pictures make fun gifts to give to people. And people love this kind of thing. Because they can hang it on their wall or keep it, just put it away as a little memory keepsake. And it, whoops. See, I've done too much there. So I'm going to get my brush, take all the moisture out of it, and then touch it again and lift all that off. It won't quite be the white of the paper again, but it doesn't matter. I can add, like I said, I can add, I can pick it up with my cloth, my little bit of kitchen cloth, and get it almost back to white. Like that. Come around. You can see that's still a little bit moist. I've still got a little bit of moisture in that ready gold, but it doesn't matter. It can blend together a little bit. doesn't hurt it at all because it's just a fun little sketch. And then come around the outside like that. And you can see he's starting to look right. Um, I'll come down onto this bottom wing. Go round the outside. Could probably do with a little bit more pigment. Again, leaving white dots as the white of the paper. You could use white pen. If you forget any of them, don't worry about it. You can go over it with a bit of white ink, a bit of white acrylic, a bit of white anything. Anything white you've got. Even a bit of a Posca pen, a white Posca pen to put back your whites if you lose them. Okay, that's his little body just about done.
and for his for or his wings, sorry. Now I've got to do his body, and his body he's got really pretty. I've, he's got. Um, I'm going to do it the inside of it, the same colour as his the the outside of his wings, and he's got little stripy spotty bum. So I'm going to do just like that, leaving the light of the paper as his actual tail. I'll go around the outside of it. And I'll drop, he's got, he's got yellow on there, so I'll drop a little bit of yellow in after. Now I'm going to mix some more of that colour up. So indigo, whoops, I need a bit more indigo than that. Indigo, uh, quinacridone, purple, a little bit, and burnt umber to make a grey, purpley grey. There we go. And the same thing, exactly the same thing, and it's very diluted, exactly the same thing on this top butterfly. I'm going to go around the outside of the little dots, like that. Around the outside. Okay. Oops, I covered that one up. Whoops. And again, I just pick it up, take the moisture out of my brush, absorb it back up the brush, then touch it with a clean bit of kitchen cloth. And that lifts that mistake off because I'd gone over. I had too much water on my brush and it disappeared the little white bits that I still want. So it just makes my life a little bit easier. Come back around here, leaving the little white bits. Then right around that edge. Okay. Like that. Go around the edge of that one, leave the white. Again, same thing. He's got slightly different patterns to the other one. And I can even go over that again if I choose to. But I think that's quite a nice effect. It's quite a nice effect. It's soft. And that's what watercolour is meant to be soft. It's not supposed to be harsh. Come around, and because it's darker, it does create nice contrast. So I'll leave little dots coming around here, like that. And then fill in that, coming around these little golden areas. Doesn't have to be exact, and that's quite okay. I could add, I might, might even add a little bit of red. A little bit of red, a bit of a bright colour to the the wings because they are. I have got them quite dark, I think. A bit of blue, a bit of brown, a bit of purple. Make that grey. A bit more brown. There we go. A bit of blue. Whoops, too much. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Okay. Now you can only you can only just see the patterns on this top one, so I'm just gonna. Go around the outside and just blob the shapes like that, like that. I'll just suggest the shapes on that back one. He doesn't need to be the same kind of detail because he's flying off into the distance. I probably didn't need to draw him on there actually, to be honest. But you live and learn. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Come down here. And then leave his little body like that. Leave little stripy bits. Pop his little antennas on. I might actually. I'll just give him some shape. Just a little bit of shape onto his wings. You can, you can only sort of just see those off into the distance. I don't like him. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We, we'll see what we can do with that. We'll see what we can do. We can make that look better. Because I like these front ones. These front ones are going okay. Um, I might just... I might... I am not. I shouldn't add more detail. He doesn't need more detail on here because he, you can't see it in the reference. But I'm going to add it because he needs it. He definitely needs it, so that's okay. Just 
do that and get a bit of just make him look a bit a little bit a little bit more detailed because I haven't left any whites on there either I might go back and add those with pen which is what I said you could do you can go back in with a bit of Posca, a bit of acrylic, a bit of gouache, anything like that to put it back if you need to, if you lose any of your darks. Indigo, burnt umber, and a bit of purple. There we go. Alright, I might just add like that. He's in the distance anyway. There we go. We're going to leave him alone. He can just stay like that. <laughs> I'll add a bit more red to the top of him because he's quite orangey. I'm going to find an orangey red. Um, do I have an orangey red? I have like a corally colour. That might work. That might work. So we might going to add that. I'm going to add that. On, that's better. That little bit of pop of colour. So I'm just going over the top because that's actually a little bit stronger than the underneath transparent sienna. So I'll pop that on there just to help lift. You needed a bit of, bit of a lift. I can pop a little bit of that on the top of these little dots as well. The bottom ones are quite dark. They're not as bright. So I'm just going to go over these top ones with that little coral colour. Dilute it. Come down here. Again on that side. Just gives it a little bit of a lift. A little bit of a lift. Because he was looking a bit, a bit brown and a bit flat. Get that corally colour down here. Just add it into the top, not all the way. Don't want it all the way around. Dilute it and get it onto these wings, but like not like I said, not all the way around. Just suggest it. It's a fun of watercolor. You can just add, subtract, do all the things. I'm going to try and fix this one up the top. <laughs> I didn't. He didn't turn out. Uh, He's not doing what I expected him to do, but that's okay. <laughs> they can't all be perfect. So I'll just add a little bit of, um, I'll, I'll pop a bit of the bright red or bright pink lavender colour. Not what lavender colour, what am I talking about? Um, corally colour. Corally colour. Into here. Because you can only just see him in the reference, but... He's anyway, come down here. And then get a bit, a bit more pattern on him. Okay, that's looking better. He's looking a bit better. I can live with that. I can definitely live with that now. All right. Now, he's got yellow. Quite a strong yellow, but I'm going to use orange because it's a bit more vibrant on his little bottom. Oops, got that a little bit too diluted and I'm just going to get my brush, take the moisture out of it and just pick up the excess with the tip of my brush. It just absorbs back up the brush again. Just pop that onto there into the little white areas onto his tail. There we go. Can't really see the or any orangey bits on this other one but I will pop them in. I'll just... with almost pure pigment, tiniest little bit of water, like that, onto their little bottoms. He's actually got a little stripe down his back, that I just saw. Let's see if I can add that over the top, whoops, little stripe over the back, like that. So that's a fun, simple little sketch that you can have a go at, you can, anyone can do. I'm actually going to see if I can lift off. 
I'm going to try and lighten the grey around the edge of this butterfly up here. So I'm going to get a, like a use, find a little brush with a short uh, bristles, and I'm going to try and scrub that out a little bit. Try and make make it a little bit lighter. So get a little see. I can use my little harder brush to just soften the edges because this one's looking a bit a bit hard. So I just wet my brush, clean water, and I just scrub into the, the edge of that top butterfly just to lift that pigment off a little bit. I've made him a bit too strong looking. So I'm just going to soften him. Again, clean my brush, go into the, the top here and scrub that with just an old sort of a harder brush like that. I'm just going to lift him off a little bit. So you can, with watercolour, you can repair, if you've made mistakes, you can go back a little bit and change things. So I'm just going to go over the top. You see how that's softened the look of that? It's, it's made, it has made him look a bit, a little bit better. I'm not going to get the white of the paper again, but I can use a Posca pen for that. So I'll let him dry. I'm going to go back in now with the fine detail. I'm going to add, get my fine tip brush. And I'm going to go in with indigo. Just pop it back into that top palette. And I'm just going to drop a little bit more indigo. Whoops, get a bit more moisture on that little brush. And pop his little antennas in. Like that. Draw his little, it's a little bit darker here where his little body joins. Like that. I'm going to darken up this underneath of this bottom one, or this the bottom of this top one, I mean. Like that. Draw his little antennas. Don't have to worry too much because you can't really see too much. And I am just about going to call that. That was a very fun little sketch. I'm Actually, no, I'm not going to call that. I'm going to get my white Posca and I'm going to see if I can. Where's my Poscas? There they are in the top one. I'm going to pop some little white dots back on this little one up here because he doesn't have any so because I didn't leave any white on him I'm going back and I'll add it on with my Posca pen which is acrylic paint so you can salvage a little bit if you've because I've got him way too dark and I just put it on my palette like a paint It's probably not dry enough yet, but I'm impatient. <laughs> That's all right. Just start to get a little bit of lighter spots. There we go. That's lifting him a little bit. Go between there. Just giving this little one little bit of light around the edges of some of his little markings because he's all sort of he was he is blurry in the reference but it didn't work when I was trying to draw him <laughs> so we'll just do that but that shows you you can do that sort of thing and I'll pop that around the outside edge get a bit more white on him there I'm not going to do anything to the other two just that one because he was looking a bit bit off. All right, that'll do. I'm going to call that done. So thank you so much for watching. I'm going to sign him down the bottom. I'll sign him with, um, I'll get a bit of purple. Let's do that. A bit of purple on my brush. Sign it down here and call that done. Oops, get a bit of that purple. That's fine. Like that. And we are done. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was good fun just to do something simple. And I will see you all next time. Have an awesome day. I'll see you then. Thank you for being here, everyone.